This is work by Ford Maddox Brown. He painted it between 1852 and 1865, and it is to be found in the Manchester City Art Gallery. It's a painting representing the hierarchy of Victorian society, and it is unique and unusual in that it is celebrating the British working class. In the painting, you have a hierarchy of Victorian society represented with different members of the class system. You have the labourers in the centre of the painting, orphan children, uh, a thinker and philosopher or a vicar, um, a couple of aristocrats, some middle class ladies and uh, an itinerant vendor of weeds to pet owners. It has on the frame biblical quotations, and this links it with the work of Hogarth and before, before him, Jan van Eyck. And when the picture was displayed in uh, a solo exhibition by Brown, he gave a written description uh, for his clients and he didn't wish to offend these middle class people and indeed he didn't and therefore we can see his descriptions as somewhat anodyne and therefore we need to look at the descriptions as, criti as critically as we do indeed look at the painting. This is the central character in the painting. Uh, he's the disarray of his clothes and uh, his buttonless shirt reflect the effort he's making in comparison with the people around him. He appears, appears sensitive and thoughtful and has a flower in his mouth. So he looks, although a labourer, quite an aesthete. Here we have at the apex of Victorian society an aristocrat and his daughter. He's described as an MP, a military man, and somebody with a private income. And his daughter is all buttoned up and defending her modesty riding side saddle. Their only concern seems to be not of the tribulations in front of the people in front of them, but only the fact that their passage is being blocked. I think the model for the aristocrat was Robert Braithway Martineau, a one-time pupil of William Holman Hunt and a good painter in his own right. On the left of the painting, we have these two middle-class ladies, one who seems to be disregarding her child and distributing temperance tracts to the labourers working. They only exist to appear beautiful and their superficial nature is reflected in the name on the baker's tray, are Puff. After Brown had commenced painting work, uh, he started receiving commission payments from Thomas Plint, a lead stockbroker. And Plint had discussed the possibility of including his wife's image in the painting. However, sadly, Plink died in 1861 and the painting wasn't finished until 1865. And of course, that particular source of money dried up. It is my view that this character was copied from a photograph of Elizabeth Siddle. Rossetti had stopped exhibiting in 1850 and wouldn't allow anybody else to paint Elizabeth. I suspect her face was copied from the photograph and the fabric of her dress was transposed onto the other lady in the painting. It was rather satirical to use Elizabeth Siddle in this role in the sense that she was alcohol dependent and she also used laudanum. And we can see from her pallid face and her red lips that she is not a well woman and she died tragically in 1862. Here we have Brown's beloved wife Emma and she is presented in the painting in affluent regalia and appears to be a paragon of rectitude. In life she was alcohol dependent, was a drinking buddy of Elizabeth Siddle and was forever being got out of scrapes by Brown and 
this led him to having to cancel much of their social life during the during the Manchester years due to her publicly disgracing herself. Here we have one of the temperance tracts being ignored by the labourers. For them, beer was an important part of their diet. It was thought at the time that the sweating uh, through beer was a good way of cleansing the system. Um, beer was sometimes forced on them by truck or tommy shops, uh, but it, uh, it dulled the alienated experience of work. It was cleaner than water and sometimes cheaper. The flower seller is bedraggled and wears a wide awake hat. He's described as being a resident of Flower and Dean Street, which was then regarded as the most dangerous street in London, and I think, well, at least one of the uh, Ripper's uh, um, victims met their end there. He has been described variously as a woman, a criminal, or a would-be criminal, and an innocent. He's selling ground cell chickweed and forget-me-nots. I think Brown was empathetic and sympathetic towards his man who is down on his luck, and he is saying, forget me not. The flower seller has often been associated with the wanted contiguous poster uh, on the wall for the perpetrators of a highway robbery. There is reference to great violence and them, whereas this character seems a rather passive and solitary individual. The perpetrator was described as having a billy cock hat, which we would now describe as a bowler hat, whereas the flower seller has a wide awake hat. It has been said that you can only get an objective view of society from the standpoint of the oppressed. This guy is like the fool on the hill. He sees everything in his wide awake hat. In fact, he's so perspicacious he can even see right through it. Behind him is a poster advertising a fancy fair for, to benefit the boys of the Euston Road Boys Home. And there will be Totter, i.e. Jumble, and Duchesses and so on attending. The William Morris Company, which Brown was associated with for a couple of years, they actually employed a group of boys from the Euston Road Boys Home and they trained them to be wallpaper printers. And so the Morris Company gave them training and independence and they didn't just patronise them with a jumble sale. There's also a, a poster advertising the Working Men's College, uh, which Brown, Rossetti and Reverend Morris were all involved with. And there is etched up money, 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 which is perhaps um, a warning from Thomas Carlyle's time past and present against the worship of mammon. Here we have the orphan children. The baby has a black ribbon on his arm uh, indicating his bereavement and the model for this was Brown's uh, son Arthur who died aged 10 months. His sister who is cast in a mother role is described as being no more than 10 years old and has a badly fitting, rather immodest, hand-me-down dress. The toddler sucks on a carrot rather than a dummy and scratches her calf, perhaps being attacked by biting insects. The mongrel dog is garlanded with a wood shaving, the length of which is a testament to the worker's sharp tools and skills. And he looks suspiciously at the middle-class dog, which is out of picture in a red jacket, um, and the labourer's Jack Russell looks suspiciously at a packed lunch. The boisterous orphan boy here is having his hair pulled by his sister for being a pain. In the barrow is a trowel and a leaf, perhaps symbolising the transformation of nature into something useful and beautiful. There is also a screwed up temperance leaflet. The boy's face also appears on town hall murals, which you won't be able to see until about 2024. And to the right, we have unemployed agricultural labourers from Ireland and England. Their redundant tools, the agricultural tools, are all trussed up, whereas the mining tools under the wheelbarrow are all being employed. In the centre of this frame, we have the pot man. 
he's bedecked in cheap Brummagen jewellery and a hunch was added to his back and he's described as being stunted uh, from exposure to gin in his childhood. On his beer crate um, uh, is part of, uh, you could just about read, a Princess of Wales and there's still a Princess of Wales in Primrose Hill. His nose is cocked in the air. He has an arrogant bearing, but somebody's given him a shiner. His hand appears to be addressing a rather intimate itch. Behind him is a labourer swilling his pint, making this painting a celebration of beer, much in the tradition of Hogarth's Beer Street rather than the Temperance. The red-headed lad has been variously described as backward, a labourer with a ball of soap and a bucket, or a labourer with an apple and a bucket. Redheads were prejudiced against, as were the Irish, and in response to this, the pre-Raphaelites often included redheads in their paintings. It shocked. Under the tree, the slightly shabby, gentle, gent, gent, shabby gent has been seen variously as an Irishman, an idler, or Ford Maddox Brown himself. Brown delighted in painting hands. They are everywhere in his paintings, but this character is the only one not showing his hand. I think it's brown. On the right, we have Thomas Carlyle and the Reverend Frank uh, F.D. Morris. Conventionally, they are seen as brain workers who enable others to work. The Reverend Morris founded Christian Socialism, which is perhaps an oxymoron in itself. Some have described these convoluted sermons as like trying to eat pea soup with a fork. Here he is, with his Bible behind his back, paying rather inordinate amount of attention to the little girl's back. Closer in, we see Brown has given Carlyle a sneering scowl on his face. Carlyle and Brown's politics were almost diametrically opposed. The Reverend Morris is given the appearance of an antisocial drinker. His complexion is pale, and he has two scars as though he's been tumbling or scrapping under the influence of the drink. Here we have the idlers who have been recruited or press ganged into canvassing for Bobus Higgins, who was a character from Carlisle's Times Past and Present. Uh, he was a corrupt businessman who um, was using his money to gain a position in Parliament. Brown had witnessed a corrupt election in 1852, and Carlisle despised elections. These two little girls have abandoned their toy, and they're carrying water jugs, reflecting the difficulty and importance of getting clean water at the time, and they're showing their contempt for the idlers, and one of them indeed is thumbing her nose at them. The ultimate joke is played on the election idlers uh, as the results are being posted on the other side of the road. Probably the idlers would be illiterate uh, since the Education Act wasn't passed until 1870, so they'd have little idea about what was going on anyway. There are soldiers just out of the picture, possibly members of the newly formed Middlesex Rifles, and possibly with jackets discarded from different regiments in the American Civil War. And you can see in this frame a very tall member of the Guards, perhaps, and that maybe reflects also the class differences in the military. Here we have a policeman harassing uh, an unlicensed orange seller. The policeman has his nose co nonchalantly cocked in the air and he appears to be manhandling her behind. Henry Mayhew in London Labour London Poor reported that the costermonger's biggest complaint was about police harassment. This poster uh, is advertising a genteel family residence. However, it also says that viewing will be by cards only, i.e. these labourers can build beautiful houses, but they won't even be allowed to get inside to see them. Brown has given the estate agent's name as William Poster, 
perhaps being a right bit of wishful thinking, as in bill posters will be prosecuted. The Flamstead Institute of Arts here is advertising a lecture by Professor Snooks, who is a character invented by Rossetti on the behaviour of cats. However, the cats are subverting the lecture by displaying behaviour which completely disproves his theories in toto. So there it is, Ford Maddox Brown's work. It's insightful, satirical, subversive, radical, and brilliantly executed. It's been described as one of the, if not the, most important paintings of the Victorian era. <laughs>